Okay, guys. Um, Musa here. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay, just let me know when you can see it. Okay, thank you, Rafa. Cool. Um, okay, so, so far, uh, this morning we looked at unit testing. Uh, so this afternoon we're going to look at building Python packages and the uh, continuous integration implementation with GitHub Actions. Um, cool. Uh, I'm sure I've, from from the uh, previous discussions we've had, I'm sure a lot of people have already started looking into this. So that's great. Um, yeah, okay. So, okay. So basically, um, where do I start? Uh, okay. So let's start here. So, so what you need to do, uh, so it's just going to be like a bit of a demo. Um, so what you need to do, so you have a, you, you have already cloned your Twitter data analysis, uh, you know, repo from, from the 10x uh, GitHub. Now, um, the first thing you have to do is create, uh, just gonna, if you can see it, a .github uh, file. This would be a hidden file, that's why I have to do this. So .github file, and then inside there, um, inside there, you will see uh, that there's a workflows directory. Okay, and you'll have, uh, I guess, your you YAML file. So a YAML file is a configuration file, right? So in general, um, okay, so this is our repo. In general, uh, what do uh, GitHub Actions allow us to do? Uh, basically, they, they allow us to do, I guess, whatever you want to do, right? Uh, because what GitHub is doing is that when you, uh, on an action that you specify, and then you submit uh, a, a, a code into into GitHub, then those actions will be taken, right? So in our case, what we want to look at is, you know, are we able to when we push uh, code into GitHub to run some tests, right? Those are the actions that we want to do. But basically, because uh, you know, uh, GitHub actions run on a on a operating system that you specify, you could probably do anything that that operating system allows you to do, right? Uh, so I've created a sample, uh, you know, a .yaml, a GitHub Actions demo with .yaml file. Uh, so YAML file is just a configuration file. Uh, it's based on uh, this, there's a starter code here uh, in, in the internet. So it's, it's just an extension of, of this starter code. Uh, for, for our purposes, right? So this is what it looks like, okay? So first you have a name uh, for the file, right? Um, or for what you are trying to do, what this file is actually for. And the own uh, uh, option is to say that, you know, when do you want uh, this, um, whatever you're going to define here in your YAML file to be executed, right? So we're saying that we want these things that we're going to list at the bottom here to be executed when we do a get push, right? Uh, and, and in some cases, you can even specify which branches you want uh, those kinds of things to, to be run on. And then you eventually list uh, the number of jobs, right? So the number of jobs, if you go here into actions, right? So these are all my workflows. So, so this would be, a, an example uh, job that I have, right? So as you can see here, right, explore GitHub actions. That's the name of, of one of my jobs. Uh, here I only have one job, 
Uh, but my understanding is that, you know, what you could do is you could have uh, as many jobs as you want, right? Of course, with different needs, right? You could have as many jobs as you want and you can, you know, uh, define the rest of this, right? Okay. Um, cool. So what else? Yeah, so I was saying that you, you also specify where your your um, your GitHub action is going to run. So here we've chosen the operating system Ubuntu. I guess the latest version, I think, would be uh, twenty point zero four, right? So that's where this is going to run on. So all these things that we're going to specify here uh, should should be things that are able to run on that uh, you know Ubuntu version, right? Uh, of course, Echo runs on almost all the operating systems. And what we, we then do, because think of it as when you say it runs on uh, Ubuntu, that it's like, you know, GitHub is going to provision an Ubuntu machine for yourself. At the moment, there's nothing in that machine. So you have to make sure that you you create or add or install all the prerequisites that you need to enable your actions to be run uh, on, on, on that um, operating system, right? So, of course, Echo comes uh, as a default. But one thing we can use is, you know, GitHub is also pre-built actions that we can we can make use of. So here we're making use of the checkout pre-built action uh, version three, and this is what's going to. Um, I can show you. Then this one. So here, checkout repository code, right? Because that's this is this is the name of the action. As, as we've called it here. So what this is, these are the steps, these are the things that, that happen because of that action, right? So we make use of a pre-built action from GitHub and we we clone this repo, right? This is the repo that we're on and, and, and basically that's it. I, I think GitHub also does a few other things there. But the, the, the main thing that we want here is this repo to be cloned. So now we have this repo inside um, our Ubuntu latest operating system. So the next thing that we do, I mean, you can check other things. So these are, you know, like, I think within GitHub Actions, there are certain, like, variables that you can you can call, right, that are already predefined to figure out, you know, what's going on there, right? So run other OS, GitHub, so all of these things, I think you can find uh, here uh, in the documentation that the, the specified here. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so... And then we see, we can list. Okay, so if we do list, uh, yeah. Okay, what step is that? After so list the files in the repository. Okay, that's our action there, right? And then this is what it's seeing, right? It sees the the readme the readme file in it. The pi. There's a data folder, you know, a test folder, and and these other files are already there, right? Cool. So that's what we can we can even check that. Now we've proven that you know this uh, git checkout has worked properly, right? Uh, so what do we do? The next thing that we want to do is we want to install the requirements. So we have the requirements file here, right? It's got pandas and text blob, right? These are the uh, modules that we would depend on that don't come, uh, I guess, pre-installed with. with no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> So, so those don't come pre-installed, so we need to install them because they, they won't be uh, part of the operating system, right? So we install those things. Uh, the way I'm installing them now, um, I think what we've done previously is just pip install, and then we give it a, 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 a the name of the of the library. But what you can do with the requirements file is you can just say minus r, which is recursive, and then it will install all the uh, the requirements within this requirements of text file. Right, you could name this whatever you want as long as you specify it. Right, but the default is requirements for text or requirements for pip. Right, you could even use conda to install if you know anaconda if it's installed on this on this uh, operating system. Cool. And then what we want to do now is we want to run the test uh, extract data frame test. We just call it like that, and then this is the uh, uh, command that we execute. Same as we've been doing all along. Right. Actually, the beauty of this is, you know, even before you push to uh, to GitHub, you can actually run this uh, this code to make sure that it works on your operating system, and you send it to GitHub and make sure that uh, the test, the same tests that are passing locally are also passing 
on the environment that uh, GitHub is going to provision for you. And then you can check the status, right? So uh, maybe one thing to specify is, you know, so here, as you can see, we have name run, right? Name users, right? This is the, the format of, of the different steps that, that we use. But, you know, sometimes you wanna, you can run something without giving it a name, right? But it's better with the name so that it's easier for you to find uh, in GitHub. Um, so maybe what we can do now, so I'll just, I'll just run this, I've already run it, but I'll just run this so that you can see, I'll just make a push, we'll make a small change and then we'll do a push. Uh, okay, so I know that, okay. Uh, let's see, it's theaters. Okay, let's just do a simple push. So we have here, uh, what do I say? Okay, so let's let's make a feeding test first. Just make run a feeding test. Okay. Good. Speeders. Good. Good. Tests. Okay. Good next. Uh, feeding test. Okay. Uh, and here we can actually run the same thing as I was saying. Uh, was my and run the same thing here. So make sure that even if we are running it locally, we can we can run it here. Okay, get our failing test there. Okay, so run one test, right? It failed because we've returned an, uh, an entry string, but this is what our code is, is uh, our test is, is expecting. Right? So we're failing test there. So let's push it, right? So we'll push it to, you know, 10x, uh, get up action. So, okay, let me show you. So, this is what I have. Okay. So, you can have, so when I'm, when I'm playing around, you know, I'll push to, you know, to my own uh, GitHub, right? Uh, but when I, I want to connect, uh, you know, I push to 10x. I've, I've just named this 10x because it goes to, you know, to this uh, account on GitHub. What I've noticed, I'm not sure if when you guys actually do it, if it's going to be the same for you. When I push to origin, for example, uh, let's start with that. Uh, push to origin. So we'll just push twice and then see. Okay. Push to origin and then we'll also push to 10x. Okay. So it's been pushed. Push to 10x as well. Okay. What you'll see is that the, I, it seems, I think it, it is, I haven't checked this, but my guess is that the 10x. Um, <clears throat> GitHub account is a is paid account. <laughs> uh, mine is a free account. So when I push to mine, okay, I'll show you now. Okay, so my profile. Okay, so okay, this one. Okay, just fork from. Okay, so I go to actions. Just okay. So first, let's just make sure that the push has happened. Uh, should have happened. The last commit was two hours ago. Should have happened. Because uh, it's here, we pushed. Okay, I think what's happening is I'm on the wrong branch. I'm in main, okay? So I need to go to the GitHub Actions branch. Okay, so you see two minutes ago, I pushed, right? I pushed my code. So let's go to Actions to see if those actions have been done, okay? One minute ago, okay. Uh, failing test. Okay, this one. Wait, wait. Yeah, this was faster than the normal. Uh, but previously, what happened is that uh, when I pushed to my own account, it seems that GitHub doesn't already have the machines uh, to run my my GitHub actions on. So it makes me wait, right? It makes me wait until those free machines are available, right? Uh, and then it can run uh, my stuff. But when I push to to 10x, because uh, I'm guessing it's a private account. This is just a guess I haven't checked. When I push to 10x though, uh, go to my, the branch that I pushed to, we go to actions. Okay. It, it runs like immediately, right? So, okay. So we have, you know, trading test that we've pushed. Uh, GitHub was able to run. So if you look here, uh, this is the command that we've, we've specified Python minus admin test. Run this whole test file, 
and this is the result that we get. So what I've done is, I mean, we have about 12 tests there. I've commented the rest of, of them and just left one so that, you know, things can run a bit quicker. So we're failing tests, so let's, let's fix our test. Um, so if, if if there's comments, I can't see because I'm really focusing on, on what I'm seeing. So if there's any questions and comments, someone please alert me. Okay. So uh, okay. So now we need to make our test pass. So it's this one. Uh, so let's fix this. Fix our test. Okay. And okay. Uh, get status. Let's add this. Let's get passing test. Okay. And then we'll push this. So this time let's just push to 10x. And we're pushing to, to this GitHub Actions uh, branch. Cool. So let's go here and see what's happening. Let's refresh or whatever there. It's the old one. Actions. Okay. Actions. Okay. 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 It's still running. So this is the passing test that was just pushed. Still running. Shouldn't take long to do one test. Ah, and we're green, right? Cool. So, so our test, everything ran uh, successfully, including our test. Right? The one test that we have ran successfully. Right? So, if you implement your test properly, you, you, you fix the uh, the functions that make the test pass, then you should see green here that you know everything went well. So, if you are if you want to push, you want to deploy, then you know all you you've seen that all your tests uh, are passing, and then you can deploy your code. Uh, to production um yeah so that's that's it in a nutshell uh but maybe yeah so i've i've done as you've seen here i've done you know this one but you can you can add all the as many tests as you want you can create as many steps as you want you can reorder uh this file uh the way you want but of course <clears throat> there are some keywords that you know uh, github will expect so you just make sure that you stick to that as well um yeah i'm not sure if there's any questions for me okay i'm just checking uh, yeah okay if you say please go ahead yeah thank you musa that was quite nice uh i just want to make sure something uh uh is a is a dot git hub uh, folder supposed to be created by the git init or are we going to uh, create the folder just manually you created by so so you so i i was doing it locally first right so i created it manually so i just you know did a make the and then dot github and then workflows right i created manually uh so you can if, yeah i so created that, manually Second, I I mean that that's the must. That's the way things. Do. That's the way we need to do it. We create the folder yeah, I mean, I, I, and then... Yes, yes, I think so. But so there's another way. I'm I'm like uh, I love the terminal. So whatever I do, I do through the terminal. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't like clicking around. But I think uh, what I've seen is that from here you can create a new workflow right so you see here you create you can do it on the site on on, on, on github.com so i think when you create a workflow this way then it automatically generates the, that file for you that folder for you but i i created it because i did it on the terminal but if you create it this way then okay. i think it, it, it creates it for you yes okay say you we created it manually on the terminal and we uh we arranged those uh, commands, uh, and when when does GitHub know there are going to be actions? I mean, we created the folder, so, GitHub, mm -hmm. and yeah. we uh, created yes. the YAML file, and yes. then 
the, with on the next push, that GitHub will uh, know that we are setting up a GitHub action? Yes, correct. Yeah. Or is there so, something so you need to do on the... Uh, no, there's nothing else that you do. So here, so this is what GitHub looks for, right? On push, then push. advance the action. Yeah, so here I'm specifying push, but I think you can also have, I'm not sure on, there's, a, there's one that I saw where you can say on pull request, right? Then certain things. Yeah, so for example, yeah. if I wanna make a pull, yeah, you can also say on pull request, you can say on push. I'm not sure what other uh, triggers are there. This is the trigger that tells, you know, get out to say, when, when, you, when it receives a pull request or a push to that report, then it, it, it can, it triggers and then it can, do all these things yes okay i understand but uh the question was you answered my question but to clarify mm -hmm. we set yes. up all these things for the first time and github mm -hmm. still doesn't know that we did this so yeah on the next push on the next yes. push he will understand GitHub will understand i think what we did in yes. this uh, github folder yes. and set up yes. everything for us so there's no other yes. thing we need to do on the uh, website. No. We don't we don't no. do any other things on the website. We just set up the file locally, and then we push it. Yeah. Then the rest is history. Yeah. But I mean, this is this is assuming you already have a a, 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 a GitHub repo, right? So you must have a GitHub repo yeah. to push to. Because, yeah. So if that yeah. is set up there, then there's not. I didn't have to do anything else. All I have to I, I have to do is yeah. now if when I do get push to this place. Then I go to my repo to actions, and then I can see that um, my action is being processed. Is running. Okay. That's what I had to do. Thank you very much. That's You're awesome. welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I see uh, Gerachev is a question as well. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, yes, uh, get a chat first, please go ahead. Get a chef. Go ahead, okay. Minister. Okay. All right, it, it, can, I, can I talk now? Yes, yes, uh, no, yes. Oh, yeah, please go ahead. All right, so, uh, I want you like if if you can ex if you if you I mean I wish if you can explain what is the issue project in action that what is their function? What okay. What is the function of GitHub Actions? Yeah, uh, the issue and the project. How do we use oh. them? I mean, I, I'm you mean the the, the connection. Is it the issues as in this tab? Or, or what are we trying to do with uh, GitHub Actions? What are we trying to achieve? Yeah. Is that the question? Yeah, and in the issue, what 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 is the function of issue? Like in the GitHub, there are a buttons like project, issue, and action, right? Yes. Like, okay. Are you are you looking at my screen? Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you say project, you mean here? And and yes. issue, you mean this? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, this is it's a bit different uh, from what I was showing you, uh, but let's just open them up. <coughs> so, okay. So I think with, with issues, uh, I haven't really used them, uh, but my understanding is that, let's say, uh, you know, you are using this, uh, you know, Twitter data analysis repo, right, to do your work. Uh, but you want to, there's, some, there's, an, there's an issue, basically, there's something that doesn't work, or maybe there's a feature that you want installed. So basically, it's to keep track of things that you'd like to be added or fixed in that repo. So that's what it, it, issues are for. So I can create an issue here, uh, okay, and then explain what I want, and then I submit, right? And then the developers at 10X will look at the issue and, you know, uh, they'll, either they'll, they'll fix it or they'll say, you know, it, it, it can't be done because of one, two, three, right? So it's actually to track 
uh, it's like a, I'm not sure if you know about storyboards, right? It's like the things that, you know, you want to do next, you know, whether it's technical debt or a new feature or a bug fix. So that's what they're using this term for. So you leave a comment, anyone who has access to this, who clones it, uh, is working on it, can do that. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Um, so that's what I, you know, issues are for. Uh, maybe someone else who knows better who's been, who's used <coughs> this feature uh, can add if they're on, online. Yeah, I think that's what issues are for. Uh, and also if you find a bug in, in a package, uh, you also report it in issues. Yeah. yeah. So it negis, are, are you okay? Are you satisfied with that answer? Yeah, yeah. What about the project and the okay. action? The project and, okay, so projects, uh, JB, do you, do you want to talk on this? I really yes, use just repositories uh, and pull requests, mm -hmm. and I don't use mm -hmm. issues as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't used projects. Okay, let's just see here. Okay, project board name. Uh, I think someone was saying that um, it's like how you track uh, activity in, in, in a project, right? So you know, Twitter done analysis, or I'm, I'm not sure if it's, because I mean, it, it is linked to this repo. So it must probably has to do with, with a particular repo. Um, so I've used, in terms of this, I've used Jira, I've used Trello. I think it's it's like that. If, I'm not sure if you, in case you know about Jira or Trello. So this is like how you no, organize. Huh? Not really, I don't know. That yeah, but I think it's, uh, we can even see if someone else is contributing on, on there. But I think it's how you track, uh, it's how you track the work that you're doing, right? So with, with Trello and and, uh, and Jira, you have uh, what they call storyboards. That's what I think the project board name. You have storyboards, you have, you know, you can name it whatever you, you want to do, done, doing, and then you, you move them around just to say, you know, um, when it's done, you move it to say it's done. So it's like tracking the work that you're doing. That's what with Trello and Jira, uh, I think the storyboards are, are used for. So I suspect that this is a GitHub uh, implementation of, of the same kind of feature. Uh, but I, I, I can look at it uh, for you further and, and get back to you um, after this call. All right. right. Uh, and then Hello? Musa, can you elaborate more on the actions? Yeah. Okay. So actions is, is what I was showing you here. Um, I've actually in here, I'll share this YAML file. There's actually, uh, there's a quick start um, that you can follow. And there's a, also a bunch of, like a, a playlist on, on YouTube, which is, which I found very useful. So I'll share this with you. But basically actions is, a, it's, it's, you know, when you, when you're interacting with GitHub, what sort of things do you want to test before? That's why with, with CICD, right, continuous integration and continuous development, maybe maybe you have, so here, what I have, uh, I'll show you now. What I have here is, okay. Um, okay. So I have, I have a branch that I call GitHub Actions. There's another branch called Main, right? So with continuous integration, what what people normally do is that they will have maybe a feature name, right? Either a feature name or they will have a branch called Dev, and then they have a, a, another branch called Test, uh, another branch called Staging, another branch called uh, Prod, Prod or, or Master, right? Uh, so now when when you are coding. Um, when you're coding, you want to make sure that certain things are, are, proper, are properly working before you, you can uh, advance the project to the next stage from, from dev to test, uh, to staging, and then to production, right? So those are things that you may want to do. So one of the most important things is, you know, run tests to make sure that you haven't broken anything in the code base, <clears throat> right? So we've just been implementing certain things here, right? Um, in, 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 uh, in this repo, right? But maybe you remove something, right? Uh, maybe you added something that breaks the, the pipeline, right? So you want to make sure that you run a bunch of things 
the in here uh, you want to run a bunch of things okay that's the wrong one you want to run a bunch of things just to make sure that uh, everything is working properly before you can uh, move the code to production right it's just you making sure that, for example, one of the things that you can actually do here is you can check. So let me just show you now. Uh, so install requirements, right? So you know that your code has dependencies, right? You want to make sure that, okay, you know, you, when you build the machine, right, then Pandas is available, text blob is available, NumPy is available, because you know that your code depends on that. Because right? if you're going to push this report to production without making sure that you know all those things are, are available, then they'll br break on the on the customer or client side, you know, which is not which is not what we want. So we want to make sure that by the time the code has been deployed, uh, everything is there. So it's it's more like a, a, it's automating the workflows so that you make sure that you know everything that is required is there. The code works as as expected as well. That's that's the whole idea, right? It's proof you could ask, actually allows you to push code faster with much more confidence because you've run the test. You've seen that, you know, it's grim, right? So when it's running in production, you know, you don't expect any any other at least code related issues. Maybe you know uh, speed, you know, maybe your 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 deployment may be a bit slow, but I mean you could even test here, right? Because like I was saying, within GitHub Actions. Because you are, you are running on an, in this case, you are running on an Ubuntu machine. You can run any, you can run anything that you're able to, to do in Ubuntu, right? Uh, like you can see here, I'm running LS, right? List, the same thing that, I, that I'm running here, right? Because this is, this is an Ubuntu machine that I'm running on, as I specified, right? So all these things are happening in an Ubuntu machine and I'm able to check that my report does what it's supposed to do. Uh, the, op the operating system is set up the way I want it to, right? Does that make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. If you're still not sure, there's tech, so you can you can bring up your more questions up there. Fine, I will do that. Thank you. Okay, I'll just check. Um, if there's any more questions on this. Okay, uh, I see your hands. Uh, JB, how, how much time are you going to be needing for your session? For your part of the um, session? Last, I think I should probably present it in the special story. Um, because then I would have the demo to show people. But now okay. I don't have the demo. So in those yeah. days, the demos. Okay, so okay, so you think right now we can take questions on the GitHub actions and then yeah, you, yeah, yes. because I think uh, they also need to use GitHub actions. That yeah. Packages. yes, yes, I agree. Okay, so just take more questions. Are uh, your hands okay? Thank you, Musa. Um, uh, most of it you have already explained it, but uh, I have this uh, confusion. We make this, you make unit. Uh, Unit test branch, and then we merge it to main, right? Yes. Yeah. So, do we need it? To, do we need to make unit pass anymore? I mean, any change we made, uh, we just push it to the main, right? Directly. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so, are you saying? Uh, let me just make sure I get your question correctly. You're saying. Uh, you are asking why I'm using a different branch and not using uh, the main branch for these things? Yeah, I mean, let's say the, the point of uh, making action is, is that when we make any change in the test, yes, it automatically runs, right? Yes, when you push it, yes. When you push it to GitHub, it will run. Yeah, when you specify that it must run on push here. So when you push, it will, it will run on GitHub. Yes, that's correct. So basically, we don't need the other branches. We just use the main branch, right? You do. <laughs> you still do. <laughs> uh, because because you, you may have a, a number of different workflows, right? So so normally with development, you find that, uh, like you can see here, right? You have 
cream cheese and you have extract that up in right yeah. this could be two different branches so when you're working at scale in a in a big team right you may find that another team is working on cream treat on training the treats and then other people are working on creating a data frame so you have two different branches so it's always useful to work on a particular branch until all your tests are passing you know if you're using github actions if everything is fine there and then what you can do is you can eventually merge into so but, but when you merge into main you have you have tested everything that your code is is, is rigorous so the github action is will check uh, every chance and every branch from all branches i mean yeah you can create as many branches as you want it's how you decide how to organize so i've just decided you know what for this demo i'll just create a, uh, a github action branch and then when so for example if, if we are happy uh if the, the rest of the team is happy then we probably can merge uh, this work into main but we have to you know at least you know maybe i should create a pull request or something so that someone else looks at it right so the, the, the problem is that when you're working in a big team and everyone can push to main or you, you previously used to be called master then a lot of things can break right it, rather things break in a branch because you can delete a branch and start over than things breaking in main when you things break in main it affects everyone mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's the that's review of, of having branches you know make uh, sure that you tested everything use branches as much as you can until you are ready to deploy or until you are ready to merge into the main repo when it's okay. been tested. yeah okay thank you for that another question you were pushing yeah. into the 10x uh, so are we supposed to push is that also no, no. just no. no i'm pushing to 10x because like i was explaining earlier when i pushed to to my own uh, uh to my own repo, it was taking a while to run. So when I push 10x, then but it's in a different branch, so it's, it doesn't it doesn't interfere with main. So I can always delete this. Yeah, it's in a it's in a different branch, right? It's in a different branch, so I can always delete this. It doesn't really impact anyone else's work. But I I'm pushing here because I've realized that when I push to 10x, it it runs faster. But when I was pushing to my uh, to my own uh, account, it was it was taking a while. It was taking uh, the first time I did it, it took about fifteen to twenty minutes to run. So that's why I'm I'm doing it. But I think for you guys, you still have to push to your own repository. Okay. How about the platforms you are using? Ubuntu, and I'm using Windows. So can we change that? That's it. Or just writing Windows thing, or it does have another syntax? Oh, you mean here? Um, yes, on the actions. Yeah. yeah yes i'm i'm not sure you see with windows uh, normally with this kinds of things you find that you know github actions doesn't work on Win i'm not sure i'll check but normally with this kinds of things you it's they, they work on linux machines from my experience like even with docker it, it, you, it's it's very difficult to work in, in windows to automate uh, things right because we see here we are using we're using the terminal a lot mm -hmm. and, and yeah so with, with windows i'm not sure with you know, using the, the CMD or PowerShell, you know, it means that probably these instructions would have to be different. So I'm not sure if uh, GitHub has implemented uh, GitHub Actions to run on Windows, but it's something that you can check here. I'm sure there's a list of operating systems. I'm not sure where, but I'm sure he, somewhere here you can check that whether uh, you can uh, run uh, uh, GitHub Actions or from a, a, a Windows machine. But even if you're developing on Windows, right? Because this machine that you get up actions are running on here, uh, it's, 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 it's being handled by, by GitHub. You don't need the machine yourself. So this is this machine here, it's, it's GitHub's machine. You don't need it. Um, so basically, so, I'm not... so, mm -hmm. so someone's saying uh, GitHub actions run on Windows. I'm not, yeah, I think if you're, yeah, I'm not sure Salam, what he or she means, but I'm not sure if you can, how you would, I think what you're asking, uh, is it Fisea? So what you're asking is, can you specify Windows here? Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So she's saying it can run, someone is saying here that get actions run on Windows. So I'm, um, yeah, it's not something that I'm, that I'm sure of. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, if you are using the, the 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 browser, of course you can you can use the browser to to do that, right? Because like, like I'm saying here, yeah, you can create, uh, you know, your um, your GitHub actions. But uh, yeah, let me see. Okay. Oops. I just made a quick uh, Google, and uh, okay. I think uh, GitHub supports Windows too. I just sent. I just put to the link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, right there, right there. Do it? The first part. Scroll the up. first part. Okay. Scroll up. And look yeah. It. Yeah, hosted okay, runners. Should... About GitHub oh, yes, hosted yeah. runners? Runners with... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I think it's right. Okay, yeah, so that's that's correct. You can run it on Windows as well. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah. Maybe yeah, that uh, answers you. his question. Yes, yeah. yes, it does. Thank you, everyone. Cool. Okay, is there anyone else with a question? Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions. Yeah, uh, I just remembered, sorry. I just remembered, I had one question. So, uh, yeah. What was, what, uh, yeah, so the test, the GitHub auctions run on the branch you pushed to, right? For example, yes. if I push my code to main, the tests will run. The GitHub, sorry, the GitHub auctions will run on the main branch. But if I push mm -hmm. my code to another branch, the GitHub auctions will run on that branch, which I pushed to, right? Yes. That is, if you see here, uh, I commented this out. Uh -huh. uh, for example, I okay. I haven't tested this. That's why I'm not running it. So, oh, if, for yeah. example, if I say this, if I say you know on push I branches, I get up actions. If there's no main, even when I push to main, it won't run. So, so it depends if you just say on push. Yeah, either you can specify uh, as many branches as you want, or or you don't yeah. you don't specify okay. a branch. And then it will run on it and the branch that you push it to. Yo, that's very clear. Thank you very much, man. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, is so there another hand? Margaret, please go ahead. Um, hi, Musa. I just um, wanted. Um, some guidance on starting, getting started with task three. Okay. Yep. Task three. Okay, I'm just open it up. Uh, could I start to do that analysis and produce a machine learning model to perform topic modeling and segment analysis? Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so I think you can, uh, you have access to to this. Uh, JB, if, if you're still there, you can you can assist if, if you have a, if you know. But my guess is, remember, I've shared uh, this sentiment analysis notebook. Um, okay, let's see. If, where was it? I'm just going to open it quickly. I think we did this on Tuesday. Okay. okay. <clears throat> it's going to open up. So I think you can you can use this code and just edit it to fit the questions, right? Um, because I think these questions are related to what I was showing here at the bottom. So I think it's related to this tutorial, but I'll, I might have to check and get back to you just to make sure. I think it's sort of related to this. Can she please repeat the question uh, because... No, no, she's, she's trying to understand how to proceed with this task. 
Ah. Yeah. So what I'm suggesting is that you can use the, the notebook that I've shared already, that we've shared, and, you know, implement some of these things based, you know, extend that code, edit that code, you know, modify yeah, that and, code. Yeah, and then, yeah. And you can Google, like, a K-means uh, clustering. Those those are all yeah. functionalities provided by Scalon. Yeah. Um, so, so, for example, with data exploration and pre-processing, right, this is where pandas comes in, right? So there's a, if I can show you here, we've done some pandas work, right? So you see, this is, you're exploring data. You're trying to see what's in that data. You can you can use uh, pandas for that to explore what's in the data, what it looks like. Uh, and, you know, uh, and even for processing, remember I was saying that, you know, I mean, uh, some of the code here, I think that in Twitter, uh, in the Twitter data analysis, you can drop columns, you can, you know, add more columns. Those are things that you can do uh, with pandas. Uh, and you can even, you know, add, remove nulls, you know, all those kinds of things. So you can do that. I think the library here that you need uh, for the most part is is pandas. Uh, but, you know, even like normal, py normal Python can, can work for some of these things. It's how you decide how you want to pre-process and explore your data, right? But also, first, for the exploration part, you can actually also use Matplotlib, uh, which I showed you guys the other day. But I, I, didn't, I didn't have a demo for this, but there's Matplotlib and Seaborn, so you can actually look at these links uh, to see how, you know, uh, to, to, to implement Matplotlib. Uh, I think maybe we can just open a quick tutorial. <clears throat> we can show you just one plot. But plotting, uh, especially, has to do with the type of data that you have, you know. So here, see, you know, they've created a nice plot tutorial, you know, for you. So you can use that uh, to see there's different all different kinds of plots that you can have, you know, you can have multiple plots in the same uh, frame, etc. Uh, so let's just see. Okay, so that's what, one tutorial. There's a lot of yeah. So you see. There's different plots. Something. Yes. Uh, yeah. Instead of uh, you may also instead of calculating like segments uh, from mm -hmm. raw numbers, like using probabilities, you can also look at text blob. It's a mm -hmm. very popular NLP Python package. It yeah. helps do all that the segments. Yeah. So for, for the uh, k-means clustering uh, for viewing the words and then clustering them according to the segments. You can use SKLAN. For finding the segment, you can use uh, the text probe. You can also do research in this, um, in the JetSim and other packages. Other packages could be text probe or something else. So I think here it's just you, we're looking for your creativity, right? You can use whatever tools uh, that you want to answer the question. Right, I think I've mentioned in here that you can use Spacey as well if you want to do pre-processing. It does a lot of uh, NLP stuff, and you can also use a hacking face as well. And it's very simple, actually. Right. So they're saying all, all other packages and APIs. Right. So you're free to use any uh, technology that you want. But also, you know, like the the data, this report that we're looking at here. Right, for example, in terms of text blob, um, yeah, where was that? Uh, I think there is, uh, which one was it? Yeah, you see, we're, we're already using text blob here, right? So you can borrow from here to see how, how it's been used and, and, and continue with your implementation if you want to use text blob, right? And I was saying that even here, in terms of the modeling part, right? Uh, we've mentioned SKL, hacking face, Spacey, uh, GenSim, uh, you know, etc. But in terms of modeling, here we've shown like a basic process of how to do it, right? So how to you know create your your card, whether the model that you want to use is. You know, you, you pre-process your data with card vectorizer or TF. It, it really depends on, on how you want to, to do it. But you can start here and then improve.
make it better, you know, uh, make it your own. But but you know, this is a there's a lots there's lots of starter, um, you know, sim simple code that you could use. Uh, I'm not sure if Margaret, if that answers your question, Margaret. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That's. That's. Um. Yeah. So. Good. Yeah. So all the resources that we've shared, you know, check what's there. See how you can you can uh, utilize them. Uh, Abdul Jalil. Please go ahead, Jalil. Jalil, Abdul Jalil. Okay, um, we can hear you. Okay, okay. now I can. Uh, I can okay. hear you. Uh -huh. Please. What I'm saying is that uh, about the task two so we are talking about, I thought the deadline has gone. Can we still do it? We are we are we are able to submit yesterday. Task two. Yes. This one. That's the yes. the workflow. Yes. No, no, the workflow and the task three. Or task three, which is what uh, 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 this one. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. JB, I, do you know if they can still submit this? I think even if uh, a task is late, uh, you should still submit uh, because I guess it's better to submit than not submit at all. Um, oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank, thank, thank you very much. And also, I the about the classification model we should use. Kimi was suggested. suggested. Can we do another one? Oh, is that scheme is compulsory? I think you can use any, right? It's the one that's going to give you the best result. Yeah, it so doesn't have to be the case. That's not to be the case, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Now There's lots. Um, I mean, if you go to the documentation of the library that you want to use and you look at, you know, what algorithms they've implemented, this many. There's many you can choose for. Just, just read. Uh, what they are useful for, and yeah, what parameters that you can use to to make. Because even even if there's an algorithm that's already been implemented, you know the the hyperparameters that you choose and you know um, have a, have an impact on on the performance of that, that algorithm. Okay, hey, and my next question is now that uh, about the K-min. But uh, assuming that I use the K-min, how can I evaluate the accuracy? Because I, I because what I was doing is that when it is clustering, or uh, we are, I, it's not necessary we, uh, we our data is divided in a twenty or ten steps. Yeah, I don't think you can. You are able to evaluate accuracy with because K means is an is an unsupervised uh, yes. algorithm. Right? It's a, yeah, it's a clustering algorithm. So uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, that mm -hmm. means we cannot evaluate the accuracy like the supervised learning that we check the how to blah blah blah. Yes, if it's supervised, then you can evaluate the accuracy. Yeah, yeah, okay. But unsupervised, there's there's not no then, way unless. Uh -huh. Okay, are you saying there is no specific metrics that we can use to measure the accuracy of the unsupervised learning? No, not that I know of. I think no. you, can, you can look at it. You can look at the data. I mean, for example, if you are, yeah, you can look at the data. You look at your clusters and see if they make sense. No. But uh, yeah, from from a metrics perspective, I'm not sure how you'd actually uh, uh, test that. But I mean, you, you can look up online and see if there's anything that other people have used, and mm -hmm. you can try that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Caleb. I, I had a question like I, I was asking if you can uh, give us some tips uh, 
on how to write a good report, like what is supposed to be in a report, like a machine learning report. Are we to take some portions of our, of our code and place it there, or rather we are only writing the flow of our findings? Mm. Um, maybe you want to take that? So I was looking in the classroom to see which task are due to be able to answer Michael uh, for today's tasks. So I didn't catch the question well. No, um, Caleb is asking if we have any tips uh, with regards to uh, the best kind of report he can write. Um, yeah, well, uh, being able to elaborate on your answers, uh, you mean like a project report? Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's important that uh, you are clear on what your project is doing. Looking at the code is not sufficient for other people. So imagine you as a data engineer, then you are, you are presenting to your clients. That's the, uh, if you can communicate to your clients what your code is doing and uh, they understand well in your report, then that's a good report. So I would, uh, I'd probably say try to I uh, think in terms of someone who doesn't understand any data engineering terms uh, or uh, uh, who doesn't understand your code, try to communicate to them. Yeah. I think clear explanations as well. And I think visualizations really help. You know, if, if you have, you can come up with a nice visualization that speaks to, you know, the issues uh, with, with the data set and, and what you're learning from it, you know, it, 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 you know, visualizations speak a, lot, a thousand words, right? Pictures speak a thousand. So if you can find, a, you can generate through Seaborn or Matplotlib a nice plot, which, you know, really gives insights. You see, we want insights, right? So if you can put, show us those insights that you're getting, uh, whether, you know, through visualizations, tables that you can, you can create, uh, yeah, uh, ex yeah, explanations of, of, of certain phenomena in the data. I think that would be great. Okay, so anyone else? If anybody else doesn't have a question, I just want to ask JD what his presentation was about today. Oh, JB. Oh, my, so, issue, what my issue was about. Oh, you mean the, t the tutorial for today? Yeah, this one. Yeah, it was about building Python packages. And uh, I thought since you needed to uh, do GitHub actions and not Python packages, it was more important for you to have enough time to, to learn about uh, GitHub actions. Uh, plus, if I presented my uh, packages, building packages uh, presentation, I wouldn't be able to, to give like a demo. And I think for those things, a demo is very important. So yeah, that's what it was about. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. So to answer my call, yeah, the, today's uh, tasks are, uh, of course, we just talked about them. Be, uh, giving uh, the interim report. Uh, uh, writing the interim report about uh, what you've been doing in this Twitter analysis data, Twitter data analysis project. And also, uh, the things to submit, of course, in Google Classroom are the CV submission, submitting the CV, uh, and then that's, that, that's by 3 p.m. Uh, and then the interim report is, uh, is due by uh, what is this, 22.59, so that's uh, by midnight. And proof of graduation is also by midnight. So so there's three things to submit, CV, interim report, and proof of graduation. So um, I'm not sure if that's answered the question. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch off my video and I think I'll stop sharing. Um, we can we can still discuss um, unless yeah there's anything else that you guys want us to show. Uh, excuse me, I had yes. a I had I had a question. 
please go ahead. It's regarding the submission time for the CV. So on the classroom, Google Classroom, it says uh, it's like missing the time. I think there's inconsistency. We're supposed to submit today, right? At three UTC, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, it's 3 p.m. UTC. Okay, you should update it because on the Google Classroom, it says it's like late. I just turned it in and it says turned in late, done late. Yeah, that's, is that okay? yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, I don't know how that can be. What do you say as a due date? The due time today. Maron? Yes, uh, the due time, the due is 3.59 p.m. Oh, okay. Yeah. Due 3.59 p.m. Okay, that's but good. But the time, yeah. the date is like April 26th. I think ah, it's the posted okay. date, or I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, we'll check that. We'll check that. Okay. So it's for today, so it's fine. I just wanted yeah, to it's confirm. Yeah, supposed to be for today. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um. So, guys, I'll drop the the. So this yeah. Okay. Well, go ahead. Okay. Can I continue? Yeah, you can continue, Michael. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I was I was seeing the deliverable and also the tasks. Somehow I was confused on the deliverable. We don't have the task four and five, and also yeah. Okay, we don't have the task four and five on the deliverable. But there I saw that the, we need to work on task number four and five. I was confused. Are we supposed to do task number four and five or not? Yeah, that was my question. Uh, JB, can you can you answer this? Uh, you are not supposed to do task four and five. First of all, we haven't talked about MySQL uh, and task uh, four and five involve uh, that uh, dashboard. Uh, you can do a dashboard, I guess. Uh, so uh, for now, you should not be focusing on those. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, is there any, anything else? Anyone? With a, Jonas? Hello? Hi. Uh, like, do we have any instructions or like, format for the interim report that we are going to uh, report today? For the instructions for the? Uh, like the, the interim report. Like, the do we have any? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do we have any uh, instructions or like any expectations, like what we have to include or not? Uh, JP. Uh, yeah. So this, like you said, there's no format. Uh, it's it's all about how you organize your words, uh, how you are communicating about what you've been learning. Uh, from the past four days, including today. So it, the organization is up to you. There's no format or template. Uh, so, uh, you know, you could have sections like introduction, you could have sections like testing, you could have sections like, uh, you know, things like those. So it's a kind of some structure of your own. Uh, so it's about creativity and uh, your style in communication as well. Okay, thank you. Okay. I think that's it, guys. Um, I'll share the, the YAML file uh, and you can um, adapt it uh, uh, the way you see fit. And you can include it in your in your in, in your in your GitHub uh, repos, there's uh, on there. Uh, as I've shown you, there's uh, 
two, okay, I can post it. There are two references uh, that I think you'll find useful. Um, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll explain better than I ever could. So those are the two references, but they will be in that uh, YAML file, which I'll share. But it's really, it's in, it's in my adaptation of what's already there in the, in the quick start. So what, if you can look at the quick start and see what they're doing, and you look, you watch those um, YouTube videos in the in the second link, then I think you you should be fine. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks, everyone. I think we can stop the recording now. Unless JB, if you have anything else to add before we close. Uh, nothing else to add other than that. Uh... So we may have like a special tutorial that means